Dogs Playing for Life is a 501c3 organization that has helped change the way dogs are treated in the shelter environment. You're giving these dogs an opportunity to literally play for their lives. We have the privilege of working with shelters all over the country and with staff and volunteers that are really wanting to help the animals get out and into adoptive homes. So they also feel good that they're, they're getting out of their kennels and they're having a good time and they're having a better quality of life. So we get to run around the country and teach people how to get them out of the kennels and into playgroups together. Any of us, if we were kept in solitary confinement for long periods of time, it's behaviorally and emotionally deteriorating. It's a really tough situation to be in. So, and they don't understand that they're only here temporarily and that everybody's trying to help them find a home. They just find themselves in what would be a version of a cell. Uh, it's just really hard on them. The sights, the sounds, the smells uh, can be overwhelming or they're kind of left in isolation and so all that stuff can be really tough on any sentient being. You have a personal mantra that I love which is every dog, every day. If we are really going to be humane organizations uh, then we have to provide quality of life and that means that they have to get out of their enclosures every day and a lot of shelters are able to turn over animals pretty quickly but then there's always this population that kind of gets stuck and has to last longer and typically they are adolescent to mature larger dogs and so that's the population that we really serve. Making sure that every dog is getting out of their enclosure every day in the new age of humane sheltering. When I first started, life-saving was pretty critical. There were millions of animals being euthanized in our shelter system. It was really clear to me that most of these dogs didn't actually have behavior issues. They were just struggling in that environment. And so now at this stage, I think what we're progressing to is making sure that as we're holding them for longer because we're not euthanizing as many, they get to stay with us until we find them the home. And now we have to make sure that their quality of life while we're housing them is good and helps to maintain their overall well-being, which includes their emotional well-being and their behavioral well-being. And so we've morphed from trying to save as many lives to now making sure we're giving them good quality of life while we save their lives. I mean, there are five freedoms. They're all equally important, food, shelter, good medical care, free from pain and suffering. But one of those is the freedom to express normal, natural behavior. And so that's really the one that we bank on. Ta-da! Dogs playing for life. To giving these guys a chance to get together and just be dogs. Yes, and there's so much fear around it. The risk of disease and injury, and those are legitimate concerns. There's always a risk-reward process. The Richmond programs like letting the dogs get out and get into playgroups, we've got to get over all those fears. And plus, the benefits of playgroups outweigh the risk. We want this to become a standard of care that shelters, they feed, they clean, and the animals are provided opportunities out of their closure and they get and they get to play with each other and that is part of what happens every day. That should be the standard of care. How many shelters have implemented your program? We just had our 200th shelter celebration and thanks to a incredibly generous grant, three-year grant by the ASPCA and Petco Foundation, the Road to 500 grant. They are supporting us to, to grow and get bigger and as fast and as furiously as possible. Uh, to provide our, our educational trainings to the open admission shelters across the country. I, I understand you have a waiting list. The grants that have come through are helping us to hire more people to get to shelters more quickly because how heartbreaking if a shelter says, we're in, we want this, we're ready for a training, and we tell them we, we'll be there in a year. We want it to be within 90 days we can get on the ground for you. Amy, what's your vision for dogs playing for life in the next five years? Definitely expanding the team, that's huge, so that we can reach those shelters that are waiting for us a lot more quickly, so that, that's a primary thing. And developing more deliverables for the shelters. Sometimes we leave feeling like, ah, we want to nurture this relationship a little bit more. So being able to do that and provide follow-up a little bit more extensively. How can viewers reach out and participate, whether that's through a donation? Anybody that has a local shelter that maybe is not an open admission shelter, if you want to help raise money to get us there for a seminar, even talk to the shelters. Do they have an awareness of the playgroup programs that are out there and that are available? Because I think everybody in spirit, whether they have a direct involvement with shelters or, or not, most people want our animal shelters in the United States to be caring for animals really well. I would like the public to understand what it is that we're trying to do. Sharing, so sharing this clip with via individual social media channels on Facebook, getting the link to the organization out there to each individual's community so that more people are aware of this really amazing work that Amy and her team are doing.